Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This week I'm joined by the brand new Toyota RAV, uh, uh, I mean Suzuki A-Cross. As always, I will take you around the car, talk you through the specification and give you my first impressions. So yes, here we are, the brand new Suzuki A-Cross. Many of you will go, hang on, that's just a Toyota RAV4 with Suzuki badges uh, plastered on it. And to be fair, you would be correct. However, to be fair to Suzuki, they have made some attempt to make it look different. And that happens at the front end. Now, if you were to compare this to a Toyota RAV4, you will note that the grill and the bumper and the headlights for that matter are, I think the headlights are different, but anyway, the front end has got a variant to it. I think I prefer the front end on this car. It looks a bit more sporty, a bit more aggressive. We've got the big honeycomb grill, which kind of looks like it's been taken from a Suzuki Swift Sport. I'm not too sure if that's what Suzuki had in their minds, but I think this is quite a good looking car. I, I do think the styling will be divisive because it is quite a bold, striking look, if you ask me. I'm not a massive fan of the alloys. They're not bad, but maybe a bit fussy, perhaps? Now, that, sh that shape there, if I just zoom in, is it me or does that look a bit Volkswagen-esque, the, the kind of shape and design of that rear light? Maybe it's just me, but I look at that and I think that kind of looks like a like a, a Tiguan or um, a Touareg. I think I'm probably thinking more Tiguan actually. But then if you come around to the rear, you'll, you'll spot the quite sporty double exhaust pipes, the gloss black detailing and of course the Suzuki badging to, uh, to differentiate it from the RAV4, but you still get the same plug-in hybrid badge that you would get from uh, get on a Toyota. Now, speaking of plug-in hybrid, this car is quite a monumental moment for Suzuki because this is the very first plug-in hybrid that the Japanese car maker has made. Now, okay, they have kind of uh, used Toyota's homework somewhat, but it has been a collaboration between the two Japanese car giants to produce this car. Now, I'll cut to the chase. This is not a cheap car. You think of Suzuki and you think of value for money and cheap and cheerful. This isn't that. Now, I hope you sat down because the price of this car is <clears throat> £45,599. Now, this does come with a lot of kit, which I will go through in due course. But for a Suzuki, that amount of money, in my opinion, is a bit mad. Of course, you've got the plug-in hybrid system and electrification is not a cheap process. It takes lots of money to develop and to manufacture. So I do appreciate that any kind of car with any kind of electri electrification will be more money. But at the, on the same hand, over 45 grand for a Suzuki. Now, no disrespect to the brand, Suzuki has been quite a big supporter for car obsession, but that is a lot of money for a Suzuki. For what it's worth, if you were to buy the Toyota equivalent, you'd be spending about two grand more. The good thing about the Toyota equivalent though, is you can have a few more goodies if you pay more to get the, um, the I think it's the dynamic premium trim level, which is over 50 grand. And that for a Toyota, that's also mad money. Um, actually, I shouldn't come this side, that side of the car's dirty. <laughs> I've been taking my photos and I thought, well, if I, if I take the photos from one side, I only need to clean one side. So yes, let's focus on this side. Now, I said I'd go through the specification, so I will do that now. So of course you get LED lights, front and rear. You get 19 inch alloys, uh, privacy glass, roof rails, keyless entry. You get a reversing camera, front and rear parking sensors. Uh, not only do you get heated seats in the front, but you also, sorry, I don't know why I paused, my, my mind just drifted off them. Um, but, you, but you also get heated seats in the rear as well. Quite nice, well, only for the outer seat. So if you're stuck in the middle, then tough luck, you're gonna have a cold bum. So in regard to the rest of the specifications, I've got a uh, dual zone climate control, the heated seats I've mentioned. Uh, the driver's seat is eight way electronically adjustable. Um, heated steering wheel, um, what else, what else, what else? Um, you've got driving modes, you've got a, an E4 e four, um, four wheel drive system, which is quite sophisticated. You've got the nine inch touchscreen. In fact, let me get into the car, which is welcome because it is quite cold today. Right, hit the uh, start button just there. 
which is kind of hidden behind the steering wheel, so you can't really see it at first glance, which I, I dislike. So yes, the nine inch touchscreen, you've got DAB radio, um, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, but get this, no navigation. So although there is a button marked map, common camera, zoom in in your own time. There we go, if you hit map, which I will do now, let me just zoom out. No, zoom out Aaron, not zoom in. That'll do, so hit map. Function not available. Navigation is not available on your system. And I'm sorry, Suzuki, but for a car that costs over 45 grand, the exclusion of sat-nav, I think, is cheeky and somewhat stingy. Um, that's all I say on it. So I don't want to be too critical, but come on, Suzuki. Just, I get this is not your system. I'm pretty sure this is a Toyota system. But still, where's the navigation? And yes, I know you can use your um, smartphone connectivity, but hey. Anyway, before I go into a full-blown rant, um, what else comes as standard? So I've got a good amount of safety kits, including adaptive cruise control, speed limiter, uh, autonomous emergency braking, uh, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and what's the other thing I was about to mention, which I've forgotten? Um, I think it's a, a, a sway detection function. There's another safety feature, which... Oh, no, it's gone. But rest assured, this car's got a lot of safety kit. Um, now, the interior. The interior is not a bad place to be. Um, it's not the most plush. I, I think I'd rather sit inside a Peugeot 3008. Um, and certain bits of it, I wouldn't say feel cheap, but they kind of look cheap. The, um, yeah, the buttons on the steering wheel, it's just... Am I being harsh? I just don't think these controls... Look at indicator store. It looks like it's come from a Swift. Um... I just don't think some of the buttons in here look like they belong on a car of this price range. Um, but, but in my, to be fair, everything in here feels solid. It feels robust. It feels like it's built to last. I think you could throw a swarm of children at this car and the interior would survive. Everything just feels really well bolted together. So although it's not the most premium looking it does feel robust so i think uh, brownie points have to be awarded to toyota and suzuki there i quite like the the, the rubber detailing on the dials and um, just helps to give it a bit more uh, ruggedness if that's even a word and you've also got um the same kind of design on the door handle so uh, the door handles are, are nice and grippy right, let's hit the um hit that you also get the digital display in front of you um so it's kind of digital, as you can see, these are just analog dials, but it looks nice enough, so I've got no complaints there. Um, so yeah, the specification is pretty good. Now, one thing I don't like is the fact this is not a wireless phone charging pad. Again, I think for a car of this money, it should really have that, but you do have a 12 volt socket and a USB, a USB port just there. Um, now, the interior has got some weird quirks about it. Now, you can see the buttons for the heated seats are just there. Um, and you think, hang on, Aaron, didn't you mention a heated steering wheel earlier? Yes, I did. The button for it is down here by your right knee. Just what were Toyota thinking? Now, this is not a Suzuki complaint. This is a Toyota complaint. So you've got the button for the um, heated steering wheel there and also the button for the high beam assist. Again, why is that there? Really, the high beam assist, I think, should be somewhere here or perhaps there or maybe even on, on the stalks. But to have it there... It's just madness, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, they thought it'd be a great idea to put the button for the traction control next to the passenger heated seat. Just that, that ergonomics just do doesn't make sense to me. Um, also, this may be a personal complaint, but for me, I'm quite a tall person, therefore I've got quite long arms. I find when I'm driving, to get to this part of the touchscreen, let's look, you can see I'm having to really stretch. I need to lean forward to hit the buttons. Now, that could be a problem with my driving setup, but the driving setup I have is comfortable for my height. So, you, you, you know, if you buy this car, this may affect you. It may not. I can only speak from my own personal experience. Now, let's move on to the uh, move on to practicality. The door bins aren't massive, but as you can see, I can fit in a bottle. That's uh, 750 milliliters. In case you're wondering, I've got a bit of space left over. Got my wallet in there. As I mentioned, you've got a tray where you can put your smartphone, but it won't charge it, um, which is disappointing. Two cup holders in the middle, a sunglasses holder, just there. A centre armrest, which I quite like actually, this is 
quite a nice design. Again, just that that function, that um, what's the word? That fixing just feels robust and just feels solid. And you've got a tray in there. We can put some loose items, and you've got a fair amount in there, as well as another 12 volt socket. So that is quite impressive. Got a little tray here. We can put. Uh, some items for example i've got my sausage roll in the glove box which i could put put there if i wanted to and of course speaking of the glove box there it is uh, it's a fair size it doesn't quite fit the owner's manual in properly so you kind of have to uh, clo close it but to be fair look at the size of that look at all that paperwork blimey i don't know, don't know whether that's an owner's manual or a long novel um, yes, getting a comfortable driving setup is easy. The steering will adjust for rake and reach as you would expect from a car of this price range. There we go. It's got quite a good adjustment. Uh, if I'm going to be really picky, a Joel's going to sell. I would like the steering wheel to come a bit closer to me, but in fact, that's actually fine. And as I mentioned earlier, the um, driver's seat is eight way electronically adjustable. Right, let's step into the rear. Turn off the ignition. Right, step into the back. Now, one thing I will say about uh, say about the back, this may be quite picky, but I would like the uh, the rear door just to open a bit more. Um, I'm not the the fattest guy, but when I got out earlier, I did find it to be a little bit fiddly. So bear that in mind if you have uh, if you're going to be transporting people that have potential mobility issues. Right, close the door like so. So as always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am of course a tall chap. But even so. I've got a very impressive amount of knee room and lots of um, leg room. So as you can see, I can really stretch out and relax. That is most pleasant. Um, headroom is also um, ample as well. So if I turn you around, I know you can't really see the headroom because I've got dark hair and you've got the dark roof lining, but just to give you an idea that's how much space I have above my head. So yeah, even if you had someone who was in here, in here about six foot four they'd probably still fit to be fair with the amount of hair i've got on my head i'm probably six foot four now um could you fit three adults in the rear it may be a bit tight but i think you may be able to it does feel uh, a bit broad in the back so if i were to move over um, i don't know three slim adults maybe and uh, there are of course isofix if you're more concerned about carrying children by the way apologies if you can hear rustling that's my coat because it's freezing today um yeah like I say, if there are isofix if you're more concerned about carrying children. And the rear seats also recline as well. They don't slide forward to backwards, but they do recline. Um, one thing I will say, because you've got the, the dark roof lining, it does feel a tad claustrophobic in here. Although, there is a fair amount of light coming in through the window beside me. The windows are pretty large, so I wouldn't say it feels overly dingy in the back, but if you go for the top spec RAV4, you can have that with a panoramic roof. And I think this car is kind of crying out for such a feature because, yeah, it's just a bit dark in here, especially with all the black leather. Anyway, um, let's move on to practicality. So you've got a door bin in the door, obviously. Give you a proper look at it there. Just realised I've just put my camera into manual focus then by mistake. Uh, you've got map pockets. If you want to pop a map, a map or a magazine in there, you've also got um, controls that come through for the for the heating and the uh, air conditioning. You've got not one but oh, two USB ports down there. So I need to I need to keep them open because they snap back like that. Center armrest for better comfort, and of course, there's two cup holders in there as well. Uh, there's no um, kind of ski chute, so you can't load any longer items through here which some may um, find disappointing but yeah practicality in the rear is pretty good and of course you've also got hooks to hang up an item of clothing right step out like so yeah just i think it's i think it does now the wheel the wheel arch protrudes quite a bit into the exit um don't know i just find getting out it's not quite as dignified as i would have liked now, time to go through the boot. This does have a hands-free function, but I'm yet to actually suss it out. So, to save time... Oh, I did it. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Now, is it me, or is the operation of the tailgate quite slow? 
Or am I just being really impatient? I, I think it's more the latter, isn't it? Um, so as always, the boot is filled with my filming crap, but we'll cut to a clip where the boot is empty. Uh, now with the rear seats up, you'll get 490 litres worth of space. So pretty good. But if you want more space, you can, of course, fold down the 6040 rear seats to give you uh, a, a little under 1200 litres. So 1,198 to be exact. Now in the boot, you have another 12 volt socket and you've also got a 150 watt uh, main socket as well but that's a two pin as you can see now interestingly i don't know why i went a bit high pitch there interestingly um you do actually get a spare wheel a standard which i can't show you because i can't quite lift up the floor properly actually come on Aaron, use your use your muscles no the stuff on the uh, on the boot floor is too heavy but i will cut to a clip where you can uh, see the spare wheel which is a rarity nowadays because a lot of new cars don't don't have such a function right let's close the boot down like so it definitely seems slow to me but maybe i'm just being really picky and impatient um, now just quickly as i mentioned this is a plug-in hybrid so on the right hand side you've got your charging port and on, on the left hand side you have the cap oh sorry there's there's a lever I've just, I've just remembered there's a lever in the cabin to open that but that's where you put you put in your fuel and on the right hand side is where you put your um your electricity right let's talk you through the powertrain open up the bonnet like so right always a challenge to do one-handed oh look like he's got it right just use my head to rest the bonnet so i can put the bonnet support down oh bear with me guys there we go so this is of course a hybrid therefore you have an engine uh ice internal internal uh combustion engine and of course ev um, so this has this makes uh this makes do with a, a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine as well as not one but two electric motors one for the front axle and one for the rear axle combined they produce a power output of get this 306 horsepower in a sensible practical family suv 306 horsepower madness that means, believe it or not, this car will hit 62 miles per hour in, get this, six seconds. That's faster than some hot hatches. That is amazing. Now, of course, don't think that Suzuki and Toyota have, got, have uh, forgotten why a hybrid is important. It is, of course, all about um, saving fuel, saving the planet and, and being uh, economical. So on a combined run, Suzuki states this car can offer, get this, I don't know why I, say, I keep saying get this, it's probably annoying you. Sorry, guys. Um, 282 MPG. That is insane. That is amazing. In, in case you want to have this as a company car, the BIK rating is just 6%, making it much lower than, well, I say much lower, but notice, noticeably uh, lower than its rivals. A lot of its rivals are 10%. In regard to CO2 emissions, uh, from memory, this emits two, uh, 22 grams per, kilom uh, per kilometer, which again is better than its rivals. Also, you can drive this on EV only power for a range of 46 miles, which again is better than its competitors. Aaron, don't come to that side of the car, it's dirty. So, if you do short commutes to work, you could drive this all week just on EV power alone, and then you can either charge it up or you can use the, sorry, I just need to get out of the way, there's a car coming. Or you can use the car's engine to charge the battery as you go. Now you've got a few different ways how you can drive the car. You can drive it just, use, just using the engine or the, um, or the motors, or you can, you can, of course, combine both. You've got the charge mode where the engine will uh, pr provide the drive to the car and also charge the battery. And as well as that, you've got three driving modes, sport, eco and normal which are all pretty self-explanatory so yeah so yes i know this is not a cheap car there's no there's no escaping that so i just need to put the bonnet back down there's no escaping this is not a cheap car but from a 
from a running costs side of things, then I'm sure it will kind of not balance it out, but over time, I'm sure you'll kind of get a bit of your money back. Um, I've driven this, I'd say almost a hundred miles and yeah, I've still got plenty of, uh, of energy left. So yeah, would I buy this car? No, I wouldn't if I'm going to be deadly honest, but I think that this would be a cheap car to run. Um, like I said, I've driven almost a hundred miles this week and I've still got plenty left to go. So I'm pretty sure that's, that's everything. If I haven't covered uh, something you wanted to know about, please drop a question in the comment section below. There will of course be a review coming. This is just a walk around. So there will, will be a review with, with driving and, and so forth. So be sure to check, out, to check that out when it comes out. And if you aren't subscribed, please do so. So you'll get a bit more content on this. Now, just to make it clear, this has been given to me by a Suzuki 2 review. The reason why I say that is because recently, some of the cars I've reviewed, people think I own them. I don't. The, the, the cars get sent to me for me to review. Anyway, that is really time for me to finish. Just one last look at the Suzuki A-Cross. There we go. So yes, I do hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. Also, guys, don't forget I've got merch, so please check that out. Go to controlandshift.com. Um, but yes, until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.